All right, so good day. For this demonstration, we'll be looking at the Caesar cipher and in particular, how to create the Caesar cipher in Python. Now, the Caesar cipher is a relatively simple encryption method. Um, to be honest, it's not used a lot. Well, it's not used anymore unless it's for teaching purposes right because it's fairly easy to crack right so as stated here it's one of the simplest forms of encryption and it, the way that it works is that each letter in the original message otherwise known as the plain text is replaced with a letter corresponding to a certain number of letters up or down the alphabet so let's say for example I want to write a message and the message is hello my name is John or message is I have a secret all right we'll take each letter from that message and do a shift now one of the most common shifts to use in the Caesar cipher is a shift of three to the right which means that in the original text or in the plain text the original message if we write a a will now become d or becomes d once we do a shift of three right so that's basically what i want to create um a simple program just to demonstrate how the caesar cipher works all right so we'll now go to the demonstration or the coding demonstration all right, so I'm using PyCharm. So I'm just going to set up a Python file. So I want a new Python file. Let's just call it Caesar. Cypher. right and this is our file so we want to do a few things though all right so what we want to do is we need two helper mappings right so what we want is to be able to go from letters to integers and from integers back to letters so with that so i'll set up two variables let me just make a comment so we need to map from letters to integers and we need to do the inverse as well all right so for persons who are new to python this is how we write a comment in python all right All right, so let us create two variables. Um, let's call it letter to integer. And this, I'm going to use the dictionary function. All right, so Python uses the dictionary function to create what we call user-defined dictionaries. All right. Inside the dictionary function, I'm also going to use a zip function all right and the zip function is used to combine two what we call tuples or some persons pronounce it as tuples tuples now you realize when i when i type zip and open the bracket it starts to suggest the fact that um it starts to say is um tuple or tuple down here all right so it's expecting me expecting us to to basically place or create um, 
a tuple, or a tuple. All right, now let's see if we remember our ABCs. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z, right? Now, the Americans would say Z, but, right, it's Z, right? I'm Jamaican. All right, so that's the first thing inside our zip function. Or the second thing inside the zip function, I'm going to use what we call the range function. Um, the alphabet is actually 26 letters, so I place 26 there. Um, person looking at Python for the first time, with Python you don't need a semicolon at the end, which is great. All right, so I'm just going to copy this. All right. Remember, only copy code when you are familiar with what you are doing or you know exactly what you are doing, right? So the second variable will store the, the mappings from integer to letters, which means that the range, I'll just remove the range, all right? So place the range first, all right? And that's that. All right, so I was just double checking to ensure that um, I actually know my ABCs, all right? All right, so now let's set a key. No, uh, we are going to use a shift of three, so we're going to assign the number three to our key. All right, so we're not accepting any user input. I'm just hard coding what the plain text is, all right? Just for simplicity of explaining what is going on here, especially for persons who are not really familiar with Python. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it plain text. I'm going to just um, store a message in here, a string. So I'm going to say I have a secret to tell. All right, so that's my plain text. All right, I want to create now my cipher text. So for this, I'm going to say cipher text. Again, this is just a variable, All right, You can call it whatever you want to call it. Set this, initialize this to empty string or empty quotes. All right, so I'm going to use a, a for loop now to basically go through our, um, Plain text, right? So I'm going to say for, let's just say for um, letters in plain text dot upper. When it displays, well, I don't necessarily need to do the dot upper. But I mean, right, I started typing it already, so let me just go ahead and do it. All right, um, colon. Now let's use an if statement. If letters that is alpha 
and the is alpha is basically checking to ensure that we're using only letters all right the alphabet contains letters only no other characters so the il is the is alpha is checking to ensure that we are using all letters all right All right, so inside our if statement, I'm going to say cipher text. Let's do a plus equal. So I want to do a plus equal with the integer two letters. Right inside of that no let's check for the letters to integers and then inside of that let's check for letters Then let's add our key to this. Remember the key is three, so we're adding a shift of three. And then let's do modulus twenty six, because twenty six letters in the alphabet. Let's say else cipher x plus equal letters. All right. All right. So this is the this right here is the code to basically encode all right or right, encipher all right so in the interest of time i'm going to just copy this paste all right and this now will be the code to um, decipher, all right. You know, just in case you want to decipher it, um, let's call it plain text. Two. All right. Let's replace this with cipher text. Let me replace this with plain text two. So basically converting um back to our plain text. All right, and that should do the trick except we want to minus the key which means that it will bring us back to our original all right all right last thing let me just do a print all right for demonstration purposes i'll only print the i'll imprint the plain text as well as print the cipher text all right um, and that's it no if there are no errors then we should be good all right, all right so let's see if our 
program works all right so run and it does so if you realize it displays the plain text here which is i have a secret to tell and then it gives it gave us the the encrypted or the cipher text down here now you can check for yourself all right to see if we do a shift of three in the alphabet if i will will correspond with l and h with k and so on and so forth now the most basic again the most basic key or shift that is used is three or the most common i should say right but you you could use whichever um shift you want so you could change this to any number you want all right but that is basically it from a programming standpoint so it's not a lot of code to create it which means that to break a cipher like this it wouldn't take much and I guess you can see now why it's not used anymore in any real world application uh, unless you want to do the Caesar cipher and then mix that with um, mix that with something else but for the most part, um, that is it in terms of coding. Now, very important, um, the Caesar cipher mathematically can be represented as such, which if you were paying close attention to when I was writing the programming code, this is more or less what we did. So we want to encrypt our, our encode X, right? So we would add x to a certain number and then do a modulus of 26 because again 26 letters in the alphabet all right and that is basically it so thank you very much